Hi everyone, I'm Akshay Datar and I'm a product manager working on security at Google Cloud. I'm really excited to be here today to tell you how you can leverage new GCP security products to bolster your security posture and lean more towards prevention. Joining me today are Shivam Dalal and Tate Regi from Goldman Sachs, one of our largest customers, to share how they think about prevention and how they use various GCP defense and depth controls to meet their security goals. In GCP, we take prevention seriously. We offer several complementary controls, such as IAM Grant, VPC SC, Org Policy, Tags, Policy Intelligence, as well as new offerings, such as IAM Deny, that all applied together effectively guardrail access authorization and resource configuration. To further harden security, we have been working on some exciting new features that I would love to highlight. Let's consider a use case to better illustrate these. Meet Taylor an organization administrator who's looking to introduce preventive security guardrails in their organization. Specifically, they want to harden security for GKE containers. But due to recent increases in cost, as well as unauthorized container creations, Taylor wants to introduce access guardrails to limit access to who can create containers and to control costs. I am Deny can help you do just that. Grant policies typically allow access, with access denied by default. However, with an I am deny policy, uh, which we recently introduced, Taylor can explicitly deny access that overrides any grants. In this case, Taylor can set up an I am deny policy to block everyone except a limited set of GKE users from having the ability to invoke the create cluster method, create container method for GK cluster resource types. This ensures least privilege and gives Taylor the ability to put some controls in place to help with cost management. Now, to truly enable preventive security, Taylor also wants to implement governance guardrails. Specifically, they want to make sure developers only deploy trusted workload for containers and serverless. This is where org policy comes in. Org policy allows you to set guardrails to enforce which resource configurations are allowed or denied. An org policy does this through the entire lifecycle of a resource, from configuration design control, resource deployment, after checking policies, through resource violation and drift detection. Now, there are essentially two types of org policies that GCP offers. First, GCP offers around 80 built-in predefined policies that we have identified based on industry best practices as well as red team findings. And we have already codified these so they are ready to go. Second, we are excited to announce the preview availability of custom org policies. With custom org policies, customers can now author and manage constraints tailored to their specific needs. This reduces the time needed to enact policy and constraint changes down to just minutes and hours. Now, let's get back to the use case. Taylor is considering, in order to ensure trusted workloads are deployed, developers must only use verified images in their deployment processes. In this case, unfortunately, we do not have a built-in GCP policy that Taylor can readily apply. Uh, so they look through GCP and GKE documentation, and the good news is that there is a mechanism called binary authorization that can ensure only trusted container images are deployed on GKE or CloudRun. Great. Now, custom org policy can help bring this guardrail to life. With custom org policy, Taylor can now author a custom guardrail for GK cluster resource type for the create and update method using common expression language uh, based conditions to deny creation or update of clusters that do not have authorization enforced. Once authored, these, cluster, these guardrails behave like any other GCP policy and can be enforced using the console, G Cloud, or existing CI CD pipelines. Now that a guardrail is designed, Taylor also needs to make sure that they can safely roll it out without disrupting operations. They can do this with an exciting new capability that allows Taylor to put this custom guardrail in, a, in dry run or audit only mode. By setting the policy in dry run mode, Taylor can study the behavior in production without actually putting production workloads at risk. Audit logs are generated, which help them understand what resource actions would be denied or allowed in contrast to live production behavior. 
Now, once Taylor has observed dry run behavior for some period of time, and they are confident that this new policy will not break workflows, they can progressively enforce this policy using tags. Selected tag nodes can be switched from dry run to production while leaving the rest of your resource hierarchy in dry run mode. Okay, now this policy is enforced. It's, 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 an, it's in action. Taylor would also like to keep track of resources that are going out of compliance. They can do this through the newly available violation reporting capabilities for custom org policies in SCC. Resource violations against, against custom policies are published to Security Command Center periodically using detectors on existing assets. Now, in addition to violations, Taylor would also like to understand where all this policy is enforced in the resource hierarchy. This is especially important for compliance and auditing purposes. And another feature that we're introducing called Policy Analyzer can give Taylor a clear understanding of what policies are applied where and what resources are impacted by that policy. With these capabilities, Taylor can ensure defense and depth across the entire life cycle of, uh, of the resource. In addition, we have several enhancements coming soon. This includes preview of violations that allows you to understand the impact on existing resources before you enforce new policies, newly authored policies, as well as authority delegation, which delegates certain policy decisions to project and folder owners. With that, I'm happy to turn this over to Tate Regi from Goldman Sachs to share their approach to prevention. Goldman Sachs has been an incredible partner working together to build our roadmap for security uh, and, uh, and the vision for security. Great, thanks Akshay. We agree that it's been a great partnership. Our account team, as well as the product teams that we've worked with over at Google have been instrumental in our GCP journey. My name is Tate Raggy, and I'm a member of the cloud enablement team at Goldman Sachs. So for those not familiar, Goldman Sachs is a major global financial institution that provides a broad range of financial services to a wide variety of clients. Technology is an integral part of our business and it provides the innovative engine that keeps our transactions moving. Within Goldman Sachs, the role of our team, Cloud Enablement, is to empower engineers in our various lines of business to use the public cloud both securely and effectively. So to give a sense of the scale of the GCP environment that we're working with, we have over 200 different GCP projects now across several of our lines of business. We also have around 200,000 Docker images and over 10,000 compute VMs running in our GCP environment today. So with the particular focus on security in the public cloud, we try to adhere to the principle of defense in depth. So this means that we have several layers of countermeasures that cover different areas of risks that we face. In this session, we'll focus on a few of the many different general categories of controls that we focus on when we're looking at security in the cloud. So including network controls, IAM, and data protection controls. So we wanted to highlight some of the GCP native tools that serve to fill these layers in our security posture. So the first layer that we have is VPC service controls and a dedicated interconnect to secure our network. So this means that all of our traffic from on-premises is not traveling over the open internet. Through VPCSC, we're able to maintain a perimeter for our organization and we can restrict access to certain projects and resources, to all of our projects and resources, to Goldman Sachs IP addresses only. The next layer down is organization policies. So our organization policies are applied to any infrastructure that's deployed within any of our GCP projects in our organization. The next layer is gatekeeper policies. So rather than running on the entire project resource hierarchy, these are a series of checks that run against our infrastructure as code files. So if a user has misconfigured a resource, these policies will prevent it from even being deployed in the first place. And the final layer that we have is IAM policies. So these control the level of access that users have to specific resources. So we have custom roles that grant a basic set of read-only and read-write permissions at the project level, and we grant these to any user that has the appropriate entitlements for that particular project. Beyond this, our application teams are able to further control access to particular resources based on their use case by provisioning additional IAM policies that are scoped to those resources. Now, let's use a real world example to illustrate how we use these different preventive security controls. So one of our major business use cases for GCP is migrating data from on-premises into BigQuery. 
So BigQuery is a solution that provides us with some great technical benefits. It's a relational database, has very strong consistency and up to five nines availability, and then has some big differentiating advantages, um, such as the fact that it's fully managed by Google, it has great scalability, and is very cost effective for our use cases. So it makes a great technical fit for the enterprise data warehouse use case we have. In order to take advantage of these benefits, though, we need to address some risks that are associated with migrating data into the cloud. So now I'll pass it over to my colleague Shivam to explore some of these risks and how we've handled them at Goldman Sachs. Thanks, Tate. Hello, everyone. My name is Shivam Dalal, and I'm also part of the cloud enablement team at Goldman Sachs. One of the biggest macro risks across the firm we have for migrating data to the cloud is data exfiltration. Data exfiltration is when an authorized person extracts data from the secured systems where it belongs and either shares it with unauthorized third parties or moves it to insecure systems. This can lead to serious consequences like financial and intellectual property loss, reputational damage, and legal issues. Now, let's identify some specific data exfiltration related risks and how we mitigate them using the security tools mentioned earlier. Following are some examples. Access to sensitive data using stolen long-term credentials, misconfiguration leading to unauthorized public access, access to public Google APIs, and granting IAM access to individuals outside GS domain. We'll now go over the risks in detail with examples. The first risk is usage of service account keys, which can be a security risk if not managed carefully. The main threats are credential leakage or privilege escalation by a malicious actor. In order to mitigate this, we enforce the two org policies which prevents developers from creating or uploading service account keys. Next risk we want to cover is misconfiguration leading to unauthorized public access. Let's imagine someone accidentally added the following IAM policy member to their project. This would open up the bucket to the entire world. We use the public access prevention or policy to prevent developers from creating storage buckets which are accessible by the public. Next is access to public APIs like Gmail, Google Drive, or APIs which are not supported by VPC service controls, which could lead to data leakage. In order to mitigate this, we restrict the services usage by only allowing approved APIs which are thoroughly reviewed by our technology risk team. Finally, we have the risk of granting access to individuals not in the GS domain. Let's imagine someone added a member abc.xyz at company.com, which is not part of the GS domain. This could lead to data exposure outside of GS. To mitigate this, we use the IAM.allowed policy member domains or policy, which only allows identities from the allowed list of domains. We wanted to briefly highlight our current process for deploying org policies and how several of the new org policy features Akshay mentioned will help us. Our current process is to review new org policies and assemble a set of new policies to be released on a monthly basis. We then work with teams on testing and rolling them out. While organization policies covered several of our compliance requirements, we did need some org policies and features that weren't included in the default set of org policies. We've been able to partner with the GCP teams to request new features for org policies that have since been implemented. At Goldman Sachs, we view our preventive security posture as a living thing. We are able to continuously update our guardrails as we use new GCP services and as we have internal and industry-wide security findings. Using the suite of tools we've highlighted, we are able to do this largely independently and parallel to the development that our business teams are doing. These tools have also improved the productivity of our engineers. Our team has been able to save development time by using security features and policies that are available out of the box on GCP. Furthermore, developers on our business teams can rely on our defaults and guardrails and focus on security concerns 
specific to their apps rather than general risks of the public cloud. Now, I will hand it back to Akshay to close this out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shivam and Tate, for sharing your approach to prevention and for the great partnership with GCP in defining the future of preventive security. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.